This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Ruhr Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at Nebene Supercharger, and behind me here you have Tesla Model Y Long Range. This is from China. So big shout out to Marcus Biel for lending me this car so early. So today we're gonna do range test. So for you guys who are new to the channel, what I do is I charge a car to 100% and then I see how far it can go. At 90 kilometers per hour, we have two different tests and then we have another test doing 120 kilometers per hour. So, um, by the way, I've been driving this car for a little bit and I don't like how it rides. The suspension is too harsh and I actually changed the, the, the tires. So it came with 19 inch um, Hong Kong tires and I changed them to 18 inch instead. So the 19 inch was uh, 255, 45, 19. Now we have here 235, 55, 18. So we then have more rubber. And I have to say, yeah, we have wind run now. It feels way better. The ride is way better than before. And actually we have skinnier tires and we don't need that wide tires on this car. This car is not that big, so I'm surprised why it had uh, 55 tires in the beginning. So here you see it. You might see this the first time. <laughs> this, this might be the first time you see the Model Y. It's just a fat Model 3, kind of. <laughs> and um, yeah, I have some sunshades right now going on. I don't have sunshade for the roof and we have glass roof and it's sunny outside so I wonder how that would be but I guess there is some uh, some heat rejection in the glass here yeah so here it is the Model Y with white seats Ooh. yeah I have some camera stuff going on right now you see we are charging to 100% we are at 98% now so in 10 minutes we should be good to go right and here you see it's got my Tesla and see usable remaining is 69.7. This is the energy that is available uh, right now, but we have 99%. But you see her nominal, nominal full pack is, okay, I think we have to go to, I just want to show it by cell temp. Yeah, battery is at 41 degrees right now. But if you go to the alt tab, uh, I've shown you guys this before in another video, but I'm going to show you again for people who haven't seen it before. No, no, this always happens. Okay, there, there, there. It just jumps a bit. This one nominal full pack is the energy you have if we charge the car to 100% and we drive it until it stops. But already at 0% before it stops, it still has another 3.3 kilowatt hour. So what we always want to measure is charge it to 100% and then drive it down to close to zero. And then we calculate if we would drive it to zero how much energy we have so what you can do is basically is you, you take you take the nominal full pack minus this one but then also minus some losses when you discharge the battery so i'm guessing we will get maybe 69.9 kilowatt hour something like that and then we will see can this car go 500 kilometers because the car estimates that we have where's the range well, I thought I have range numbers in here. Maybe I don't. Oh, she. Okay. But uh, oh, there's a new feature. You can just press this one, right? No, yeah, where, where is it again? Huh? I thought we, you could just press this one and then get the the range numbers. Or oh, maybe here. No, that's. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not been implemented yet. So in that case, we have to go here, display. Or maybe I'm just a noob. Maybe I just haven't figured out how to do it. And then go to distance. And there you see it claims 491 kilometers of range. We are on the move now. So uh, this time we have to cruise at 92 kilometers per hour. Remember, we will do 120 kilometers per hour test. And remember that the speed limit in Norway is 120 kilometers per hour. So uh, yeah, so far, uh, so good. The consumption here is just peak because it's high, high in the beginning. So we have, yeah, by the way, 20 degrees Celsius outside. So the first thing we'll do is check the weight of the car. Let's hope the scale is working. <laughs> oh yeah, and also when we start, so when we, we, we were finished charging, it showed 99.7%. Wait, hi, is that kaput? Why is it still showing 99.7? This is weird. Because on the display here, it already shows 98. Hmm. Uh, okay. That is weird. <laughs> front axle 
1020. Okay. Total 2060. Ooh, okay. All right. All right, and mirrors into the. Oh, it's hanging. Wait, what's wrong with that sock? There is some wind. It's supposed to be headwind right now. So you see, the Mjolsen today is not too calm. You can see on the second wind sock there, but right, all good. We have been driving for one hour and we are down to 79%. And you see the consumption after one full lap uh, is 153 watt hour per kilometer. Huh, but if you look here in the energy here, you see that the current one is only 142 watt hour per kilometer. So the explanation might be that, well, we have some kinetic energy that we haven't released yet because we're moving. And also, once we started driving, the battery, you can see it here, uh, the battery was hot and it needed to be cooled down. So maybe, and also the cabin maybe was a bit warmer when it was stationary. So what I'm saying is that uh, we can see on the next lap, it might drop. But I have to tell you that um, many people they uh, they think that Tesla's consumption is not correct because Tesla does not count a consumption from uh, air conditioning or heater or battery heater. That is incorrect claim. I've tested it so many times before, even video with Millen the Falcon five years ago, that the heater and cooling and battery heater, everything is counted in the trip meter. But I guess people are trying to spread false rumors, false information about Tesla simply because they, they can't explain why Teslas are so efficient. That's why. But remember guys, Tesla counts everything just like the other cars. The only difference is that once you stop, then Tesla will not stop counting because they define it as the trip is, has ended when the trip stops. We have been driving for two hours now. This is a second lap. A second round and the consumption is 151 okay so far so good right 150 it seems like 150 might be the average now so um we're down to 59 percent we are still not even halfway but uh i'm pretty sure we cannot go 500 kilometers it's going to be 450 something right yeah okay it's almost six in the evening now and the Mjösen right now is so calm no wind right here so that is perfect look at this this is near perfect driving conditions 22 degrees celsius sunny weather no wind and right now we are averaging 150 watt hour per kilometer what is the energy thing saying here 139 wow i don't know why i keep getting these low numbers but this one <laughs> for some reason is always higher well, well okay so we are about halfway now 48 percent but it means that the predicted range right now is around 460 only hmm. not quite the 507 kilometer vltp right uh, we are now back at nebenes so the consumption was 148 watt hour per kilometer that is actually the best in this class the closest one is the mbb cars i think the best result was the uh, the, uh, the q4 but we come back to those results okay now we're going to charge up a bit and then we do the 120 test well speed is not too bad for now but uh, this is only v2 on the v3 i have seen that it doesn't charge that fast compared to some of the other uh, uh, batteries from model 3. we are now on a high speed run so this time we have to cruise 122 kilometers per hour. It's 17 degrees Celsius outside. The sun has set now, it's nine. Oh, I can feel like winter is coming. Nine in the evening and it starts getting dark, yeah. Oh, summer lasted not long enough this year. Ugh, I'm not looking forward for winter. But uh, okay, so um, right after I supercharged, I actually let the car uh, cool down the battery a bit. So you see the battery is at 41 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's not ideal. Ideally, you want to let it cool down to around 30 degrees. Uh, because the problem now is that this test um, is short. We are only driving uh, 78 kilometers round trip. Normally, you don't do that. Uh, so we supercharge it, heated up the battery. And now we... <laughs> normally, you would charge maybe to 70% at least. And then you might drive 250, 300 kilometers before you charge. 
So um, that's why I'm trying to mitigate the problem with the battery heating up because right after we start driving now, the car will spend extra power cooling down the battery and that might actually, if you do the math, the consumption will increase by as much as 10 to uh, 20 watt hour per kilometer. So, but at, at least now I let it cool down. So mitigate the problem. It might be just five to 10 watt hour per kilometer higher consumption. Wow, that is a nice sunset. But you see the road surface here, I know this road surface. I've been driving here so many times. This surface is quite rough. But I feel like the noise is not too bad. You guys can even hear it through the camera. Um, but I'm using 18 inch wheels with 55 profile. So that could help big time. Hmm. But I wonder compared to the Model 3, maybe I get the impression that the Model Y might be better, but I'm not sure. We have to test it on the noise test. And then I guess, yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna come back with the Hong Kong tires and test also how they perform. We are back at the starting point and look at that consumption. 206 watt hour per kilometer when doing 120 kilometers per hour. That is incredibly good compared to the other cars. Remember, this is a, a big car. You have to compare it to Ionic 5, uh, Enyaq, ID4, Q, uh, Mach E. All of them, they have higher consumption. So this is actually the most efficient SUV crossover. Really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and actually it means that the range here will actually beat many of the other cars in the same class except for Mach-E which has a bigger battery. So yeah, if you have a 20-30% bigger battery, 20-25% something, then yeah, of course you get better range. But this is really, this is why I like it that you have efficient car, you don't have need the biggest battery but you still have good range. So there are so many benefits by, by making the cars efficient. Uh, but okay, um, so you see that this, the Model Y has the best space in this class. It has the best efficiency, m mostly the best or some of the best range even. Charging speed is also quite good. Not top notch, uh, that might be fixed. But um, also, I forgot to remember, I forgot to tell you that this is a 70 kilowatt hour. We get 70 kilowatt hour out of it only. So eventually there will be a bigger battery out there, the 82 kilowatt hour that they have in the Model 3. That one should also come to the Model Y eventually. Then you get six kilowatt hour more and that should mean 30, 40 kilometer more range, something around there, see? This is really impressive. <laughs> and I now understand why so many people are buying this car. So again, you know, I also always have to defend my uh, uh, arguments every, every time I praise Tesla, because this car is by no means perfect. The interior here could be one notch better. The soundproofing could also be a little bit better like the German cars, but it ticks the right boxes. Good range, good charging speed, plenty of space, tow 1,600 kilos, supercharger network, and of course the superb Tesla uh, infotainment screen and app and the whole thing about Tesla. So yeah, that's why it's probably gonna sell like hotcakes. So this is gonna be game over now for fossil cars. I'm just kidding, yeah, fossil cars, of course, yeah. So I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later. And tomorrow I will come back and test the stock tires. <laughs> See you guys later.